Well, hello fellow YouTubers. I have another exciting video for you. In this tutorial, we are going to examine linked lists. A linked list is a data structure that provides the capability of storing data in memory and allows it to grow or shrink as needed. Linked lists can be hard to grasp initially, so if you need to watch this video more than once, by all means, go for it. So let's get started. A linked list is composed of nodes. Each node contains at least two attributes, data and a pointer to the next link. So each node, if you can think of each node as a link in the list, and that forms your list. Sometimes it's best to have a doubly linked list so that each node in the list can know about its the link preceding it and the link following it. For that case, a C structure is perfect for providing, pr providing us with this capability. A C structure is perfect for providing us with this capability. So let's take a look. I'm not going to create it as I go, as I normally do, but instead I'm going to talk about it. We have here, you notice we have a type diff struct and then a node T. In the previous talk, when I talked about structures, I said that the preferred method was to use the, the definition of type. So to define a type as opposed to defining tags. Here you notice that I have a tag and an, a type. And the reason for that is because in order for me to reference a node of the same type, I need to define it first. So if I remove this, I can't define it, define a type in here. So it has to know it. So the only way to really, at a minimum, the only way to define a list is by using tags. So I have the node and it's sort of recursive because it re references itself, but it doesn't really reference itself. It no references another type of its own. And that's what we're doing here. Now, a linked list can be composed of any type of data. So the nodes can, com can contain any type of data. In this case, we're just using a simple integer data type. But just like anything, we could actually have uh, integers, strings, anything we want. We could actually have more data in here or even a nested data type in the node. In this case, we're using a definition to node, to a structure of node to point to the next and a structure of node to point to the previous. So normally you have to create the nodes and the way you do that is you do that through dynamic memory allocation because the data can grow as you need it. So you don't necessarily allocate the data because you don't have an array and now this can get really large or it can shrink really small. And so you don't know what you need until you have the data. In this case, I define create node and I have a pointer to a node type and I allocate the memory dynamically by using this. Now I can do this. I can define it this way by saying malloc and I tell it the number of bytes that I need size of T because I define the type. If I didn't use node T, if I use the tag instead, I would have to use something like this instead. And that would provide me with the same thing. But for now, let's just use node T. Seems like I have a sticky mouse. Let's do node T. So here we have the data. We have just a value of zero and we have next and we point it to no. You may remember from other instances, uh, for example, in the string library and different libraries, those are defined in several libraries. In this case, we can just have std lib and it's defined there and we just use null. That's so that we have a known value for our next and we can compare it to something. If we don't do this, we would have garbage and we wouldn't necessarily know if a next points to anything or not. And here we have previous and we just return the node that we created. 
when we want to add a node, we may actually have an empty list. And we haven't talked about this, but you notice here that I have two asterisks instead of one for the pointer. And I'm saying this is the head. I could easily just say it's the list. In reality, it's the list, but it's the head of the list. So in this case, I have no T and I have add and I have node and pointer pointer. And the reason that I need a pointer to the head is so that I can know where to start searching for the next insertion point. And you notice I do the same thing with tail because this is a doubly linked list and I want to keep track of the tail. And of course I pass my data. If the head is null, and notice that I use a single asterisk because I'm getting the value of the pointer that it points to. So this itself is a pointer, it's not a value. It is a value, but it's the value stored within the pointer to the pointer. So I check to see if it's null. If it's null, I create a node which just simply calls this. I create the node and then I tell it the data, whatever data was passed in, and I point next of that to null. Then I take the head and I point the previous of that to null. And then I set the tail and the head to the same thing because at this point, if we created it, that means we only have one node. So tail and head will be the same thing. But what if the head is not null? In that case, we would take a temporary value, a pointer, and we point it to the head. We take the previous and we point it to the temp. And here, we look for the temp to be null. We know that it's not null because that check was performed up here. So we look at the temp and we say, while it's not null, and what we're doing here is walking from one link to the next. So if you think of a linked list, something like this, where let's say, for example, we had nodes and the best way that I can think of representing the nodes would be something like this. Let's say we have a node and we have data. This is our data and this is our next node, which is a pointer, P to the next node and it points to a value. And let's just say, for example, that this was item zero and P, for example, would point to one and here is one. And so this would be one. And let's say, for example, this has three. And then it points to, it can point to null. We could say it points to null. And that would be the end of it because this points to one and this can point to nothing. And of course, the same thing. And actually, the P would not be P, it would actually be next. And same thing with this, this would be next. And we could just describe it the same way. Describe next would be one. And that's not the value one, that's the address of the next node. And we could keep going and for example, when we add another item, we can add another item and point it to the next item. So when we add another item, we create a node. For example, let's say we created another node and at that point, it doesn't have any, any value in the list. So let's say, for example, it was value five for the data. And next, we set it to null. And at that point, we can say that we can take this node and point next. Now that we have another node pointed to item two. So we can say point this to two. And this is node two. And it points to that one. And it's just linked and it goes on and on as it grows. So what we're doing here, when we say P temp not equal null, and we say if P temp next equals null, that means we've reached the end of the node. So in other words, we walked here and we say, hey, give us the first one. This is temp. Look at next. Okay. And we look at here next. If next equals null, but if we if next is not null, we point P temp to the next. So we take temp. And we say, oh, it points to one. Let's look at one. Let's look at next. Next points to two. Let's go to the next one because we're incrementing here. And we say, well, P temp not equal no. Eventually it gets here. And it gets here and it's still not no. 
Then we check to see if the, the next attribute points to something. If it doesn't point to something, we know we found the end. At that point, we create another node. We create the node here and we say, oh, we have a node. We, we set the data that was passed in in this function here. And then we set the next to null of that one, set it to null. And the previous, we set it to temp because temp was pointing to the previous one. So we just say next previous equals temp. So now we are pointing to both next and temp. So for example, in this case, we're not even showing the previous, but we can say something like this. Previous equals null on the first one because it's pointing to nothing. In this case, previous is pointing to item zero, which is the previous one. So it points to zero. And in this case, previous would be pointing to item one. So we can say previous points to item one. But notice I'm not passing values into previous and no. What I'm passing is a pointer to the location and the memory's handling internally. I don't even have to worry about the numbers. I don't pass a number. I just point it to the node. For example, in this case, when I say previous equals p temp, and it points it to that. So when I get to the end and I say p temp next, which is this one, the one that I just created, that becomes my tail. So now I have a pointer to the tail. And that is the way we add. So when it's empty, we set it. The reason we need a pointer to a pointer is because when it's null, we need to create the value stored in the pointer to the pointer to the node. And that way we don't have to worry about uh, not having a reference to the head. In other words, we don't have to keep it externally. And you'll see in the code as we walk the algorithm. So it's that simple to add the node. Let's say for example now, we want to display the list. So to display the list, we pass it the list or we can pass the head, whatever you want to call it. So we have a temp to the list and we just simply walk the list. We say what temp not equals no and we print the data stored in it because the reason we check to see if it's no because we want to be able to do this. If we were to do this without checking to see if it was no, this would give us an error because we're trying to do this on a null object and you can't do that. So we display the data and then we just simply walk the list. We say temp equals temp next and it just keeps walking until it reaches the end. And of course, when it reaches the end, we don't display anything. Here we have destroy list. Let's not talk about that yet. Let's save that for last. So as you can see in the main, we have time t. And the reason I had to reference time t was because I wanted to do a random number generator, use the random number generator. And normally in order to get a different value every time you have to seed it with something unique. So for example, the time always changes. So if I seed the random number generator with the time, then it's going to give me a different set of values each time I run the, the program. So I have time t and I have a pointer to the head and the tail. So notice I don't have a pointer to a pointer. I have the head and the tail. It's not until I go to add that I pass it by address. So that is actually a pointer to a pointer. And in this case, I just want to create 30 nodes. I walk the list and I add a node and I just pick a random value from zero to 99. So this is going to add random values to my tail and then I can display the list by calling display list here and it's just that simple to display the data in the list and then I go ahead and destroy the list. So let's take a look at what happens when we run this program. So we go to the command line and we navigate to our location which is in Hmm. OK. 
okay cd sandbox let's see what we have in here and we have dynamic memory so let's navigate to dynamic memory let's clear the screen let's see what we have in here and we have main so let's go ahead and compile our program and the way we do that and i already forgot the so let's see <coughs> our command is so our command is gcc as usual our parameter dash o and we gave it a name to our executable let's just call it foo.exe and may not see. Let's see if it compiles. And it compiles with no problems. Now let's run it. And you can see that it displays the data just as we thought. It also destroys the data because I printed a state, I, I executed a printf statement to, when destroying the data. You notice it destroys it in reverse order. And that's because I'm going from the tail down. So if you notice, the last item was seven, but I'm destroying the first item at seven, and then it goes to 86, and then to 55, and then to 10, and then 89, and then 92, and then 20, and so on. And it gets all the way to the end 67 here, and 67 is the last item I destroy here. So let's take a look at the destroy. And let's see why that's important. So when I destroy the list, I just pass it the tail. I could have done it from the head as well, but I chose to do it from the tail. And so I just create a temporary node pointer. And I say while well, tail is not equal to no. If I have something, if I have an empty list, tail is going to be no. And it, in that case, it's not going to destroy anything. So I say while well, tail is not equal to no. Now I set a temporary value to tail. And then I walk the tail down to the previous. So now tail is not the true tail and that's okay because temp is pointing to the true tail, but I'm going to destroy, I'm going to release the memory allocated to that. But before I do that, I print the data that's stored in that so that I can say what I'm destroying and then I destroy it. Since I destroyed temp, I just destroyed the tail, but that's not a problem because the tail is already pointing to the previous item on that list. And it just keeps going and going while the tail's not null. When it gets to the end, the tail's going to be null. And that's the end of it. So that's a linked list. And this is a data structure. If you've ever if you ever take a data structure class, you will do a linked list. Uh, nine times out of ten in the real world, you will not have to implement your own linked list because they already come as part of some package or another and you don't have to worry about those details. I did not cover talking about finding an item within the linked list, but let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that we wanted to find an item within the list. So let's say for example that we want to find an item. So we say find item and list and we can simply say we want to pass it the node pointer to the head and we want to know the data and very simply we can do it the same way we can take and we can say temp equals head that's to get us to the first point, uh, first location. And we can say while temp not equal to null. And we can say temp equals temp next. But here we can execute a condition. We can say if temp data equals the data that we're looking for. At this point, we can find the item. So if we want to return the node, we can simply say 
and we can return the node and we can say return temp. So let's do that. So here we take and we destroy the list, but before we destroy the list, let's let's do this and say let's find something within the list. So we execute a printf statement. And we have the defined value. And then we can find what did we call our function? Find item and list. So we want to find item and list. And we say we want to find an item and list. So we say find item and we pass it the value, but I think we have to pass it first the head. So we simply pass it the head. And we pass it the value and it will get, give us the node. and we can output the data that it finds. Let's see if it really finds it. But there, there's a chance that it won't find the value, so let's say if temp not equal to null, then we display it. Otherwise, we can say that it did not find anything. And to make things interesting, let's do this. Let's go ahead and put this in a loop. So let's do a while. And we can just say one. So we can do this and let's say for example, if they enter negative one, we break. If value equals zero, we just break out of the loop. And we can say in enter value, we say zero to quit. Okay, let's save it. Let's examine that everything is right. So value. Okay, printf, scanf, value, okay, value equals zero, break. If not, find item in list, we pass it to value. If 10 not equal no, okay, everything seems fine. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and try to build it again. Oh, we have an error. So let's see. And line 19, expected comma, expected before P node. So what did we do wrong? What did I do wrong? It says line 19. So there's a lit, uh, error in our find item. Wow, before line 19, huh? Oh, how did that happen? And... We need that as well. So let's try it again, save it. Find item and list and function, error unknown type name node, node temp head, oh. 
Okay. And it says in where? 61. Oh, minus head, so we can say equals. And we should be saying no T. If we use no, we can use no, but we'd have to do this. We have to do that for tax. So let's just do no T. And let's save it. Let's give it another try. And this time it builds. Let's clear our screen. So let's go ahead and run full exe. Okay. So there we have our list. Oh, but wait a minute. Let's do something else that I forgot. So we display the list, we print if, and while one, it didn't, it didn't flush our buffer. Oh, uh oh. That's what I meant to do. So let's save it and try it again. This control C to quit this program. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try to rebuild it again. Did we save it? Yes, we saved it. So let's try. Again, let's clear the screen so we can see it better. And so let's now execute foo.exe. And now it says enter a value. So now we can look through values and say, okay, let's look for 60. Uh oh. Uh oh, what went wrong? Oh. We didn't do our address of operator, so let's save that, try it again. Let's build it again. Let's run it again. And so now this time, let's do 29. And it comes back with the value. And we know that it's not just printing what we output because keep in mind that when we're doing this, we are getting a node that's in the list. So it's not like we we can cheat that. We're not displaying the value that we entered here. We, we are actually looking in the list and displaying the data that for the node that it finds. So let's say, for example, that we look for something that doesn't exist. So let's take a really high number like since we know that our max is 100, so let's just take a number like 101, and it won't find anything. So 101, and it says value not found. And that's how you search the list. So there you are. This video is a little long, and it does take some time to play around with the list. When I created this list in C, it had been a long time since I created any type of list. And so it took me a while several errors here and there and I had to figure that out and one thing that I noticed too was that I wasn't using this because I said in the prior video when I talked about structures I said this is you shouldn't do this it's not preferred do this but what I came to find out was that if you don't do a tag then you can't define it because I can't say no T in here because it doesn't know about it yet till it gets here so the only way this works is you have to use the tag here and then define it here. And that's one of the ways that, you know, you can't get around it. You have to use a tag in that case. And But you can see that I used uh, the type everywhere else. So you can define a tag and a type. And there you are. So what I challenge you now is take this uh, linked list and instead of, instead of just inserting anywhere, instead of just adding the node anywhere, insert it insert it in sequence in the proper order so what you want to do is insert if it's lower than the value of the head insert it before the head if it's greater than the value of the head find the right location i challenge you to do that 
It's not as easy as it sounds, especially not the first time around. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, go ahead and subscribe, like it, share it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave your question in the comments and I can try to answer as best as I can. Thanks for watching.